We didn't get the money. But we were told by the Israeli security forces that Iran never went back to the banks in Italy and put its money back in those banks. We were asked if we can do the same thing in other countries, and we did. We went to Germany and domesticated our judgments, and Iran shifted the money away from the German banks. We went to France and domesticated our judgment, and Iran pulled its money away from the French banks. Recently, we hear in the news that Iran is pulling its money away from the European banks and sending it back home or to bank account in Asia. And there is no much Iran can do with the money back home. They need the hard currency. They need the dollar. They need the euro. They need to issue letters of credit. They need to trade with Western European countries. They need to fund the terror organization in the Palestinian Authority, which use only three currencies, the shekel, the dollar, and the euro. By obstructing Iran from using the hard currency, we're obstructing them from funding terrorism. Because if you stop the flow of the money, you can stop the flow of the terrorism. Just half a year ago, we won a great victory in the court in San Juan, Puerto Rico. The case was filed on behalf of a major terror attack that happened in Israel in 1972 in Lod Airport, back then called Lod Airport, today is called Ben Gurion Airport. It was done by a terror cell of the Japanese Red Army, three members that wanted to carry attack in the airport in Israel. They took a flight of Air France from Italy to Tel Aviv and were waiting for the bags to arrive on the carousel along with the rest of the people. The second their bags arrived on the carousel, they opened their bags and started shooting towards all the people in the, ground, in the crowd. They took out hand grenades, guns, and started massacre the entire crowd in the arrival hall. They killed 28 people. 17 of them were Puerto Rican pilgrims that came to visit Israel for the first time in their life. Christian who saved their entire life to visit the Holy Land. The Japanese Red Army carried this attack along with the Popular Front of Liberation of Palestine. And these two groups together were supported and funded by North Korea. We filed a lawsuit against North Korea in the federal court in San Juan, Puerto Rico. We brought terror expert to the court who testified about the support that North Korea gave to these two terror organizations. And in June last year, we got a judgment against North Korea for $378 million. What do you do with such a judgment? Well, we know that North Korea might have assets in the United States and around the world, and we are going after these assets. In the end, we believe that we'll get some compensations for these victims. For in 1997, 12 Iranian Jews who tried to cross the border from Iran to Afghanistan disappeared somewhere along the border. Nobody knew what's happened to them. Their families went to the Iranian government to seek for information, but the Iranian government refused to give them any information. Their families ran their own investigation. They went to every hospital in Iran. They visited every jail in Iran. They went to every police station in Iran asking if anybody knows what's happened to their sons, to their brothers, to their husbands, but nobody gave them any information. After some years, the families gave up. They left Iran. Some of them moved to Israel. One family moved to LA. In 2002, a neighbor of the family that moved to LA came to them and told them the following story. He told them that he was dealing with a major prison of Iran in prison in Tehran, trying to sell them a land. In the course of a business deal, he was invited to take a tour of the jail to learn what the needs of the prison are. 
He came to the jail, he took the tour, he was accompanied by one of the guards who took him along, and towards the end of the tour, the guard told him that they have to go downstairs 10 floors below ground. They went downstairs, and the neighbor saw a very dark cell. He approached the cell, and he suddenly recognized the son of his neighbors that disappeared some years before. The boy was very excited. He thought that finally come, somebody came to rescue him. He approached the gate, but the neighbor was very afraid, didn't say a word, and took a step back. In the end of the tour, they went upstairs, 10 floors up, and the neighbor, who couldn't hold himself, very carefully asked the guard, who were the prisoners that he saw in the dark cell? And the guard told him that there were Jewish prisoners who tried to escape from Iran. So now we know that these 12 Iranian Jews are still alive, sitting in a jail in Iran, have been tortured, and we wanted to raise public awareness for this case. We wanted to file a lawsuit against the Iranian government, but we couldn't do so because the families were not American citizens at the time. Our only venue was to file a lawsuit against an Iranian official, but in one condition that we catch him in the United States and serve him with a lawsuit. One day, we hear that Muhammad Khatami, the former president of Iran, is coming to the United States to be a speaker in the UN. After a lot of efforts, we got a hold of his itinerary, and we saw that the next night, he is going to be a speaker in a dinner that was held by CARE, Council of American Islamic Relations. We learned that for $400, you can buy a ticket for the dinner, and for additional $400, you can buy a photo opportunity with Khatami. So we hired a process server for Virginia, an ex-policeman, the only one who had the courage to serve Khatami. We gave him the papers of the lawsuit and provided him with $800, $400 for the dinner, $400 for the photo opportunity. He came to the dinner along with his wife. He took his turn to take the, the picture with Khatami arrived. He stood near Khatami, handed him the papers, told him that the families of 12 missing Iranian Jews are suing him in court. Khatami took the papers and the photographer took the photo. <laughs> the processor and his wife did not stay for dinner. Khatami had 20 days to answer the lawsuit. He failed. We brought the families to Virginia, testified before the court, and now we are entitled to a judgment against Khatami every day now. When we get the judgment against Khatami, we know that Khatami has assets in Germany, in France, which we will try to go after them. But this wasn't the reason why we filed the lawsuit. We filed the lawsuit to warn Iranian officials that once they leave Tehran, there will be courts, there will be process servers, there will be lawyers that will try to indict them for their crimes against humanity. What do you do with a judgment against Hamas? One day we get information that the head of the Palestinian Authority in Gaza, Ismail Haniya, um, went to Iran and raised $40 million. Since they cannot use the banking system anymore, he put them all in suitcases and reached the border between Egypt to Gaza, where he was stopped by the Israeli forces who did not let him go to Gaza with the suitcases. They told him that if he wants to cross the border to Gaza, he has to leave the money behind. Ismail Haniya, who worked very hard for the money, did not want to leave the, man, the money behind, and told the Israeli forces that he is a prime minister, he's got diplomatic immunity, and so do the suitcases. But Israel did not agree, and did not let him go, and for many hours there was a big crisis on the border. In the end, the one that came to save Ismail Haniya was the Arab League. We all know that the Arab League is one of the most anti-Semitic organizations in the world. In 1945, 
the Arab League decided to boycott Jewish businesses and corporations. In 1945, when the Holocaust just ended, Israel was not even established. The Arab League decided to boycott Jewish businesses and corporations. Every time there is an idea against the Israeli state or the Jewish people, the Arab League is standing behind it. The Arab League came to Ismail Ania and told him that they have a solution. They will open a bank account on their name in, in Cairo. He will deposit the money in the bank account, cross the border to Gaza, and they will find a way the next day, two days later, to transfer him the money. And that's what happened. The Arab League opened a bank account in the Bank of Cairo in Cairo. Ismail Hania deposited the money, crossed the border to Gaza, and we got a phone call. We were asked if there is in any way we can stop the money from falling to the hands of Ismail Hania. We have a judgment that we won in the American courts against Hamas for more than $100 million. We took this judgment and went to Washington, where the Arab League has an office, and filed a motion for a turnover proceeding, saying that the money in the bank account of the Arab League belongs to Hamas. We have a judgment against Hamas. Turn the money over to us. The Arab League did not ignore this court proceeding. They came to court. They hired a lawyer. They argued that the money does not belong to Hamas, that it still belongs to the countries who donated it, and their proof was that the money did not cross the border to Gaza. We have a former intelligence agent that came and testified exactly what happened, how the Arab League opened the bank account, and how the Ismail Aniyah himself deposited the money in the bank account, and why the money belongs to Hamas. So we were able, able to win their motion to dismiss the case. And now the case is going to trial. But in the meantime, the money is frozen. We got a letter that was interpreted by the intelligence services that was written from Amru Musa, the head of the Arab League, to Ismail Haniya, saying that, unfortunately, they cannot transfer them the money, that according to their legal advisor in the United States, they are not allowed to transfer the money until the court proceeding is over. We believe that we will win the case. We believe that in the end of this trial, the Arab League will pay $40 million to terror victims. That will be the first time that the Arab League is paying money to Jewish people. That will be the first time that the Arab League is paying for its anti-Semitic policy throughout the years. Another threat that Israel is facing is lawfare, is the tries of Israel's enemy to indict IDF soldiers and Israeli officials for war crimes in the world. It's a very dangerous weapon because once the IDF soldiers will be convicted with war crimes, they will be arrested. They will be put in jail in a foreign country. And these arrest warrants stop them from traveling all around the world. We hear about General Doron Almog that went to England, and just when the plane landed, before he got off the plane, he got a message from the Israeli council telling him about the arrest warrant against him in England. Doron Almog did not step foot in England and took the plane back to Israel.